Good morning, friends, and a very blessed Easter Sunday. Welcome to St. Andrew's Cathedral. Please stand and let us worship the Lord with our processional hymn as we declare that Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ is risen. The Collect for Purity. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, glance the thoughts of our hearts by the inspirations of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Family resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Please kneel if you are able to confess our sins. Together we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, true weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As the forgiven children of God, let us stand to sing Gloria in Excelsis. As we remain standing, let us pray the collect for Easter Sunday. Together we pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrections of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Please be seated for the Scriptures reading. Today's Scripture reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Acts 10. 34 to 43. So Peter opened his mouth and said, 
Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the graduate hymn, Hymn of Praise, 111, Lo, in the grave he lay.
The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the first verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Mark 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, my Lord and my God. Amen. In Mark chapter 16, we could say that there were three surprises awaiting the disciples of Jesus. The first surprise was an opened tomb. For the very heavy stone door covering the entrance was unexpectedly rolled away, saving Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome the effort of opening it. Indeed, quite a surprise. As the woman said, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? The second surprise came upon the heels of the first, for as soon as the woman entered the tomb, they could not find the body of Jesus. Instead, they found a young man dressed in white, and they were alarmed. Verse 5, Don't be alarmed, said the young man. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified? He has reason. He is not here. Go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. Later, when the disciples met Jesus, the risen Lord, Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark 16, verse 15. The disciples were then given a task. And in Acts chapter 10, the text read for a while while ago for us, we witnessed just how Peter in the house of Colinius carried the task out nicely. The message of Peter was rich. He talked about the fairness of God, how In Jesus, the peace of God comes true, and how Jesus is the Lord of all people. But amongst all the other important points, let us now spend a moment on verse 36, which is an important verse. It says, You know the message of God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. Peter underlined the importance of peace through Jesus Christ. 
Indeed, the peace of Jesus is crucial in bringing God and man together. For without the peace made possible by the risen Lord, we could say that God is still angry with us for our sins, and we still have to face the wrath of God. So the peace of Jesus is in fact the good news, bring about salvation. And Mark 16 underscores the importance of sharing that good news by repeating the command of the risen Lord in verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. It is with such an understanding of being sent out into the world to preach the good news of peace to all creation that our Anglican liturgy wisely and beautifully ends the Holy Communion service with the saying, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And all good Anglicans will say, in the name of Christ, Amen. Indeed, our liturgy captures the accents of the text very well here. But what exactly is this peace of Jesus? What are we talking about when we say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord? When I was serving as a priest in a church, and that was many years ago, a church member came to me and asked for my advice on how to resolve the ongoing conflict between him and his wife. Although married only for about a year, both husband and wife were going through a very rough time because fierce quarrels soon became a common thing in their day-to-day -day life. As I was trying to locate the root of the problem, he responded rather painfully by saying, Pato is one thing, living together is another. I believe you know what pato is, right? For Singaporean, it means courtship. Upon understanding the difficulties and challenges, I advised him to do his very best to make peace with his wife. Because without peace, there is no way anyone could begin reconciliation and reinitiate relationship building. So peace is important. A week later, I met him in the church. And therefore, I took the opportunity to do some follow-up with him. To my surprise, he told me now that they both are living peacefully together and quarrels, fights were things of the past. As a pastor, and I could say with sufficient rich experience in ministry, I was curious and therefore asked how such big turnaround is possible only within a week. And here is his reply. I stop talking to her <laughs> and she, in return, stops talking to me. And now we have peace on earth. <laughs> is this peace? The answer is obvious, isn't it? It is anything but peace and certainly not the peace of Jesus that we are talking about. So, what is the peace of Christ? Certainly not Cold War. So, what is the peace that we are talking about that can bring reconciliation, that can build relationship and remove animosity? And the answer is, the peace is about being patient and kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. 
It is not easily angled. It keeps no records of wrongs. It does not delight in evil, but instead rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. The peace of Jesus is about love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It is about speaking the truth in love. Ephesians chapter 4, 15. And both peace and love of God, both is being expressed in Jesus' ministry, in his service to people around him. And we can see that clearly happening in the life of Jesus in all of his works and deeds. Jesus demonstrates to us who God is and what peace, love, and service are in God. As we are commanded, instructed by the risen Lord to go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation, we need to know that our message to the world cannot be anything other than the peace, love, and service of Jesus. Now, as the chosen messenger of God, we have to ask ourselves this basic but very important question. If what really matters to us the most is not the peace, the love, and the service of Jesus, would anyone ever take God's message seriously? For example, can anyone take the gospel of Christ seriously if we say that the entire purpose of following Jesus is mainly about becoming rich and healthy? What would people really think if we say as Christians, since being saved by Jesus, and now we have God to help us we can truly live a stress-free and problem-free happy life? If our gospel message is only about getting rich and attaining good health and living a comfortable life without headaches, then we can say we have twisted the gospel of Jesus into a commodity only to serve our selfish desires and needs. Emmanuel Suhart, a French theologian, says that Christianity does not consist in engaging in propaganda, nor even in stirring people up, but in being a living mystery. What is being a living mystery? He continues. It means to live in such a way that one's life would make no sense if God did not exist. To some extent, what Emmanuel Suhart says would not sit well with our modern culture. Because what we have now, in addition to the pursuit of wealth and good life, it's about lifting people up to feel good about themselves and sometimes even to feel good about God. Often at times, we try to lighten the weight of following Jesus by making it feel good so that it is easy to suit the appetite of our secular culture and bring new people to the church. Without question, it is done sometimes with the best of intention to bring people to the church. And since a few good gospel will appeal to many, just like the few good music. And it is not wrong to say that God will no doubt reward those who obey his divine will. 
to some degree, it is true that God being God will bring joy to our lives and give protection to our troubled souls. And knowing God will care for us always gives us a good sense of feeling. Nothing wrong with that. However, we start to assign feeling good as the main driving feature behind our faith, we ended up distorting God's message since the focus of the gospel should be all about God, His love, peace, and service. And sometimes this will not lead to just feeling good. We need to be aware that a few good gospel although may seem to work sometimes, we risk falling into the danger of cheapening God's grace if we are not careful. Tertullian, a bishop and theologian in the second century, says that non-believers during his time were astonished at how Christians love each other and support each other, especially in time of great difficulty and persecution. We need to ask ourselves today, is there anything in our lives that may astonish the non-believer? We talk and preach a lot about Jesus. But why? Why do many people, both inside and outside the church today, still cannot experience the presence of Jesus, especially the presence of His peace, love, and service? St. Anthony of Padua, the 13th century Franciscan preacher, complained that the church in his time was over flooded with words. From his saying, we can agree that nothing much really has changed since we still talk too much and do too little today. If our lives fail to manifest the presence of God, why would anyone be convinced to believe? Peter and the rest of the disciples received a mission from the risen Lord, and they pressed on to carry it out, notwithstanding the suffering, persecution, and martyrdom. If we ever wonder how the early church was able to persevere and not giving up, the answer is here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 45, in which Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. These is a difficult lesson to practice. And we should not make like the extremely high cost involved here. Notwithstanding the extreme difficulty, we need to ask why Christians would still be so willing to make peace and even to walk the extra mile to serve the enemy, for example, feed the enemies when they are hungry, just to show the love of God? And the answer is, unless there is something fundamental, unchanging about our faith, it will not make any sense at all to make that sort of sacrifice. Indeed, to the outside world, there is something rather puzzling and intriguing here. And that is because Christian faith essentially 
is about how we live, how we live a life to bear witness to Jesus' peace, love, and service. And this is what resurrection is all about, using Paul's language. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. It is certainly right to say that every Christian should follow Jesus. No one will disagree with that. But to follow Jesus, we actually need a form of dying and resurrecting within us. In other words, we need a spiritual pilgrimage through life and death so that resurrection or life transformation can happen within us. Although these may sound frightening, it is actually joyful as well, for we know that death is not the end, but a transition to a new life in Christ. That is why, when being brutally persecuted and facing the threat of death, Christian martyrs are able to stand firm, to say and do the right thing before the persecutors. It is not that they are unafraid, but because they know they share the life of the risen Lord and hope is in Him. We mentioned at the outset that there are three surprises awaiting the woman and the disciples in Mark chapter 16. First, the stone door covering the tomb was unexpectedly rolled away. Second, an empty tomb. Instead of finding Jesus, the woman received a message from a young man dressed in white, and the rest is history. Yes, the rest is history. But here lies the third surprise, a lot subtle and eschatological because it is about the second coming of Jesus. When the disciples gathered around the risen Lord and asked him about the time to restore the kingdom to Israel, Jesus said, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. After saying this, Jesus was taken up into the heaven and two men dressed in white suddenly appeared before the disciples. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Verse 10 to 11. The returning of the risen Lord is a reality. When the day comes, the question we need to ask ourselves is, what would be his assessment of us, both individually as a believer and collectively as a church? As we say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord when ending our Holy Communion service, has that become a cliché? What message do we bring to this broken and suffering world? Are we faithful witnesses to the peace, love, and service of Jesus? What surprise awaits us when we receive the so-called report card from our Lord. What surprise! 
a good surprise or not so good a surprise? So may the Lord help us and bless us as we serve Him faithfully, however limited and frail, but in faith by faith, we can claim victory because Christ is risen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we heard the word from the Lord for us today by our Archbishop, Dr. Titus Chun, let us keep a moment of silence to reflect. Please ten. On this significant day, as we celebrate again the victorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us renew the promises made at our baptism. Do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce the devil and all his works, the empty show and glory of the world, with all the covetous desires of it and the carnal desires of the flesh, so that you will not follow nor be led by them? Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in you. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, Jesus Christ, as your only Savior and Lord? I believe and trust in you. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, the giver of life? This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please kneel if you are able for intercession. Let us pray. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us come together this Easter Sunday to pray for the church and the world and thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your message through your servant, Archbishop Dr. Titus Chung, who reminded us of the peace, love, and service our Lord Jesus Christ brought to this world. And our duty is to tell the good news of salvation to the world. Heavenly Father, Today, we celebrate with the Church Universal the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We thank you that by his death and resurrection, we have been redeemed from the penalty of sin. We are reconciled to you and we have eternal life. Rejoice in the victory of the cross over sin and death. Thank you for the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your amazing love for humankind. In this darkened world, torn apart by wars, political tensions, human tragedies, sorrow and pain, we pray that many will come to the light of Christ, find in him their living hope, 
and source of eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Singapore, we pray for divine wisdom for our government leaders as they navigate Singapore through the challenging global landscape. We pray that internationally, Singapore will be able to contribute significantly to the promotion of goodwill, maintenance of peace, and foster good economic cooperation. Singapore has worked hard over many years to maintain racial and religious harmony, and we pray that this will not be undermined by internal or external elements. We pray that we will remain a united and cohesive society marked by mutual respect and genuine concern for one another. Lord, in your mercy. For the diocese, we pray for our two service arms, St. Andrew's Mission Hospital and Singapore Anglican Community Services. We pray that God will empower our diocese to provide excellent care for many that are suffering from physical, mental and special needs through these service arms. Further, that Christ's love, passion, healing and salvation will be displayed to all that we serve. We also pray for divine wisdom for the President of the National Council of Churches of Singapore, Bishop Lu Guan Ho, and the Executive Committee as they serve God in their various roles. We pray that the churches under NCCS will continue to work together to fulfill God's kingdom's purpose for his church and for our nation. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. our prayer. For Cathedral, we pray that Cathedral will continue to shine forth the light of Christ in our city and that many will come to encounter our risen Lord. Pray that Cathedral will be a living sanctuary and God is peace to dwell among us. Further, the preaching and teaching of God's word will transform lives and that the Holy Spirit will minister to every heart. We pray that Cathedral will be a channel of blessing and of vibrant witness to our nation and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Let us pray the last prayer together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, please stand for the sharing of the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia! The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Let's exchange a sign of peace with one another. As we remain standing, let us sing our offertory hymn, Common Praise 160, Thine be the glory.
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you set before us so we and all your children shall be free and whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please be seated, my brothers and sisters. A very warm welcome to you all and wish you a very blessed Resurrection Sunday to all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Our SAC family, Cathedral family, would like to welcome those who are here with us to worship our risen Lord Jesus Christ for the very first time. Could you kindly raise your hand or wave your hand if you are here with us for the very first time? Thank you. May I draw your attention for two announcements for today. First, it is a recorded video message from our Archbishop, the Most Reverend Dr. Titus Chunt. Let us watch this video together. Shalom and, blessed, Shalom and blessed Resurrection Sunday. Every year we celebrate Easter, for indeed this is a cornerstone of our Christian faith, that Jesus Christ died on the cross overcame death and rose from the dead for our sake, so that as believers in Christ, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So the question now is, how are we to live out this newness of life? This phrase may pop up as a suitable reply. We shall go in peace to love and serve the Lord, for which I believe many of us, well trained as good Anglicans, will automatically respond with, in the name of Christ. Amen. But what does it mean to go in peace to love and serve the Lord? Firstly, we must know that the peace mentioned here is not referring to the feel-good peace that the world talks about. Instead, in this world full of conflict and divisions, we are called to carry the presence of Christ into the world, bringing God's peace where there is hopelessness, suffering and brokenness. To love and serve the Lord echoes what Jesus said in the Great Commandment, and that is to love God and love our neighbour. We all know that love is more than just words. It should be put into action. So let us go out to love in action in big and small ways, loving and caring for the people around us, especially the ones in need. So, this Resurrection Sunday, may the power of the risen Saviour empower us to go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Let us heed Archbishop's call to bring God's love and peace to go and love our neighbours, even our neighbour is our enemy. The second is, it is regarding the car park after the service. Please remove your cash card before you exit the car park. I repeat, please remove your cash card before you exit the car park. If you forget, I will accept it as your free will offering to our Lord Jesus Christ. Please take note, the gantry will be raised for only 30 minutes after the end of the service and parking charges will be applied thereafter. Thank you all. 
That is all for all announcement. Please kneel to receive God's blessings. Let us receive the blessings from the Almighty God. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, please stand to praise God for what He has done with our recessional hymn, I serve a risen Savior.